This is lesson 8-2, which is quadratic functions in vertex form. Our essential question is how can the vertex form of a quadratic function help you sketch the graph of the function? So vertex form, so we're going to kind of build up to our final vertex form. So we're going to first look at what does the k do to our graph? So understanding the graph of g of x equals x squared plus k. So you can see from the picture here that if we have x squared minus 4, our original graph is the red graph and our new graph is the blue one. So that, that's going to shift the graph down 4. If I had, let's call it h of x, if I had x squared plus 2, that would shift my graph up 2. So it would look something like that. So your graph is going to shift up or down based on your k value. So a positive number will shift it up. A negative minus number will shift it down. But you notice it's still maintaining the same axis of symmetry. It's just shifting straight up or down. The next question is what happens if you have a number that's inside the parentheses with the x? So x minus h squared. So we're asking how does the graph of g of x equals x minus 3 compared to that of f of x equals x squared. So x squared is our red graph and x minus 3 squared is our blue graph. So you can see from this picture that x minus 3 squared shifted it to the right 3. Now if I had, let's come up with another one, let's say I have h of x equals x plus 2 squared. That would shift my graph to the left 2. So what this means is it's, kind of, it's opposite of what we typically think. So we think positive moves it to the right and negative moves it to the left. But for these inside the parentheses, they're going to be opposite. So if it's minus 3, we're shifting it to the right 3. If it's plus 2, we're going to move it to the left 2. So now we're kind of putting this all together. So this is right here is what we call vertex form. So you can see there's an A, there's an H, and a K. We've already explored in the last lesson what A does. A is the same as what we saw before. It tells us if it's narrower or wider. If A is negative, it tells us it's going to open down instead of up. And then just in the previous example, we saw what H and K do as far as shifting our graph. So the vertex of your parabola is going to be at the point HK. So you can see, and we know, again, we know how this is a negative value and this is a positive value. So we have to keep in mind that that's going to be opposite what we see in our equation. So if I look at this first example, I have x minus 1 squared minus 3. So that tells me that my vertex is going to be at the point, so vertex is going to be at the point 1, negative 3. So I'm going to go to 1, negative 1, 2, 3. And my original function up here, this is the one I'm looking at, doesn't have an a value. So I'm going to just sketch in. Our parabola. Now the blue function down here has a different a value so I'm going to graph that with blue so we can see the difference so that would make it narrower but it's going to have still have that same vertex at 1 negative 3. Okay if we go to the middle graph okay I'm looking at this one up here right now that's going to have a vertex at the point positive 1, 2. So I'm going to go to 1, 2 and put a dot. That's my vertex. Okay, and so I'm going to sketch my function. Okay, and then the blue function down here says 0.25 is my a value. So I know that that's going to make my function wider. But again, it's going to have the same vertex because I didn't change the h or the k value. Okay, and our last one over here, we have, so our vertex 
would be at negative 2, negative 1. So again, opposite of the h value, same as what the k is. So this would be negative 2, negative 1 right there. So I'm going to sketch in my function. Okay, and then the blue graph down here. So it has an a value that's smaller than 1, so that means it's going to be wider, and it also has that negative, which we know that means it's going to reflect. So this is going to be a wide parabola that opens down instead of up, but notice it still has the same vertex. Okay, so our final one is graphing in vertex form. So we're going to talk about kind of the steps that we would take to graph. I'm going to sketch in my x, y axis. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is plot the vertex. So I can tell from this equation that my vertex is at negative 1, 5, and that's coming from opposite of the h value, same as the k value. So negative 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So there is my vertex, okay? Step two is we're going to make a table and we're going to use symmetry. Step three is use symmetry. So if you find, since we know that the vertex is on our axis of symmetry, so I'm gonna kind of sketch a dotted line there, we know that if we find a point to the right, we can find that same point to the left in the same distance away. So if I make a table here, okay, I'm going to put my, so I know that the point 1, 5, negative 1, 5 is on my graph, okay, then I'm going to plug 0 in. So if I plug 0 in for x into my equation, I get 3 out. So that's 0, 1, 2, 3, so that point right there, which means I know that the point on the other side of my axis of symmetry is also a point. So that point right there, that would be negative 2, 3. So again, those are using symmetry. Okay, so now I'm going to plug in the point 1, the x value of 1, and if I plug that in, I get negative 3. So 1, negative 1, 2, 3 would be right there. So then again, using symmetry, I can say the x value of negative 3 would also be at negative 3. and then I can sketch in my graph. It's always good to kind of ask yourself, does this make sense? So is my graph reasonable based on what I know? So that negative out front tells me my graph's gonna open down and have the vertex being a maximum, which is true. We know that the two is going to make my graph narrow and that graph looks pretty narrow. And then we've already plotted the shifts to the left and up based on our H and K values. Okay, so that is how we 